to be live. It took a while to start streaming there, but um, this is going to be a relatively quick stream because I have to start working in like 45 minutes. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a quick uh, kind of instructional stream, uh, make a q and I don't think I'll play any games unless people really want to. Uh, let me open the chat. Reconfigure all my windows here. I've been playing around with uh, the settings with the stream, like the webcam settings and mic settings, using the Blue Yeti, which uh, I think is offering the best sound quality out of like all the mics I've used so far. Uh, hello to people in the chat. Hello, Toilet Noggin, Chess Bus, Phoenix Live, XI Sparks. Good to see everyone. If you guys have questions, uh, I'll be answering questions. Um, I thought I would start, though, by just looking at the Carlson game, because I haven't seen the game yet, and um, I'm hiding the notation, so uh, I have no access to like the computer analysis in, uh, in Lee Chess. Um, so let's quickly go through, and then I'll probably start answering questions. Uh, <laughs> today, longer stream. Today is a shorter stream. Yesterday was one hour. This is probably going to be less than one hour. Um, I did not just wake up. I woke up uh, at least an hour ago, maybe two hours ago. Hard to keep track of time. Um, anyway, let's take a look at this game. If I can move the pieces. Why can't I move the pieces? There we go. Night A3, what? Are you serious? Carlson played Night A3? I said serious, and then Siri responded, but Siri, uh, you have to be quiet. Okay. Um, Night A3. Night A3, uh, I first saw this uh, several years ago. It was probably 2007, 2006, um, which was at the US Open. Uh, thanks for the cheer, Toilet Noggin. Uh, the bit leader, because it's August 1st. Happy August. Um, Shabal have played this like consistently at the U.S. Open uh, several years ago. I want to see if I can try and find the, um, that tournament. Let's type in Shabalov, uh Night A3. U.S. Open, maybe? More bits. Belgium Novice with 11 bits. Thank you, Belgium Novice. Uh, maybe it's this article. 2015, really? Night A3? No. I'm getting a bit sidetracked here. Maybe 2007? More bits. 300 bits. Thanks, Belgium novice. Ah, okay, so it was probably 2007. <laughs> okay, the bits keep coming. I don't know if I can turn this sound thing off. Uh, I appreciate all the generosity. But, um, okay, let's take a look at the Carlson game. Uh, and then later I will scroll up to answer any questions. <laughs> so knight a3, g6. Yeah, he, the knight has some use on a3 to come to c2. Toilet noggin with a thousand bits. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, toilet noggin. Um, okay, so d5. So they transposed into some sort of... Uh, C3 Sicilian, like Alapin with early knight a3. I'm going to use the opening book um, with Lee Chess. Has this ever been reached before? This has. This, this has been played over 50 times on Lee Chess. Can people see this? Or is my face blocking it? Oh, people can see it. Okay. So how many times has knight a3 been played? Knight a3... Knight a3 does not make like the top 15 moves. Um, but there's still over 2,000 games. Let's keep going. It's crazy that this has been played before like so many times on Lee Chess. Uh, thanks, Wolfang, for the sub. Appreciate that. Okay, let's. 
Find the novelty. Okay, so queen a4 is the official novelty, according to the Lee Chess table base. Um, this is such a crazy position, though. Um, king f1 so early. This is exactly what Carlsen likes to play, just fresh positions without too much, uh, too much theory, too much preparation from the opponent. Thanks, Dwami, for the sub. I'm trying to evaluate this position, like who's better? Because both sides have really unusual development. But I feel like white has a nice pull. This queen is a target, rookie one could happen. Okay, so they trade on c4. Is it just gonna simplify after a queen trade? It's just, oh, Carlson keeps queens on the board. Knight e5, I like that. And black's king is stuck in the center. Okay, stuff gets traded. And with a pawn on e5, it's a bit double-edged. Like, the pawn on e5 just completely blocks out the bishop, and the knight has access to some juicy square like d6. Um, but I have a feeling this shouldn't be too much better for white. What is g5? Just a pawn sack? He could win e5. Yeah, this is not, uh, this is not better for white, I don't think. Let's see how Carlson wins this. H6. It's logical. Now this is a Carlson type of position. Just kind of a grindy endgame with some imbalances. And let's keep going here. Prove the rook. The knight is so well placed on e4 because it can't be attacked. It controls d2. It prevents f pawn from moving. But how does white win? Okay, he maneuvers a knight to h4. Goes back. They finally trade rooks. Kind of forced. What? The game just ended? While... Knight d2 and knight takes e4 can't really be stopped. That was really abrupt. Wow. I don't know where black went wrong. Um, maybe allowing the rook trade. Maybe he should play bishop b6. Uh, prevent rook d4. The bishop d6, it just seems like after the rooks get traded, the knight comes here, these pawns are, are weak. Um, I'll probably take a look at this game more in depth later. Because there were there were multiple stages stages to this game between the <laughs> crazy opening and this grinding endgame. Um but okay, I'll try and answer questions in the chat. Uh let me scroll through here. Let me scroll past the bits. Uh good way to start August. Uh cool guy. St. Louis is good. I got here two days ago. It feels like I've been here for a while. Sometimes when you're in a new place, you just adjust like really quickly. I'm slowly overcoming jet lag. Yeah, rook d4 was very strong. b3 ended it. Was b3 a blunder? What else to do besides b3? wonder if he was in time trouble. Like maybe he could take... Take, take, bishop e5, and the knight would have to retreat. Wait, this does not look too bad for, for black, because c3 is a constant liability. And if the king ever tries to run over, then king g6 happens. Okay, so now I'm confused why he didn't go for this. Knight b5? Even have a feeling like black could be better here with so many white pawns just stuck on dark squares and king g6 coming. I think I'm going to cheat and use the engine, but if I had to guess it's maybe minus 0.3 or something. Turn on the engine. 
Okay, it's about equal. So he just missed a simple, like, he just played b3. Wow. That's so sad. Sometimes that happens after, like, such a long, strenuous tournament. Um, even decently strong GMs will just make very bad blunders. Um, ouch. If he just takes on c3, it's, uh, it should be an easy draw. Okay, well, that's a good finish for Carlson. Not finishing on a terrible note. Uh, okay, so are there any questions? Does anyone want to look at like openings or... Uh, what do people want? <laughs> Scrolling through... Hello to Solar Artistic from Austria, nice. Hello Syrian NM. Knight c6, bishop takes c3, knight take a5. Wait, what? Knight c6, bishop takes c3. Bishop takes c3 defends a pawn on a5. So that would be, that would be bad for white. Uh, end games, Nimzo Indian, end games, England Gambit, Rosen versus Hansen. I have a video on my YouTube channel of, uh, it's called Eric versus Eric. Uh, right. I played Hansen. Um, I think we played like six games, but I only um only posted one. Uh, Grunfeld. I know very little about the Grunfeld. We can take a look. I can show everyone the refutation to the England. Um, I think I have a study open. Yeah, let's do. Let's name this Q and A. Um, what to do? Refutation to the England gambit. How do we spell England with a U, right? Let's turn off Stockfish. Why is Stockfish? It should be disabled. Hmm. Why is it still on? Wait, I'm so confused. Sockfish is disabled here. There we go. That was weird. Uh, yeah, let's take a look. E5. So this is not a great opening, but it's a decent opening for Blitz because I think there's a trap here where after knight c6, bishop f4, or let's say knight f3, queen e7, bishop f4, the typical England trap is queen b4 check. Um, I have to remember. I think it's something like this. This, take bishop c3, and then bishop to b4. Uh, with a threat of with a threat of queen take a1, so white will play something like queen d2 to break the pin. And then after bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, defending a1, white would leave c1 undefended, and this is mate. Um, so let's see how many people actually fell into this in Lee Chess. Uh, opening book. Almost 1,200 people. And there were a few games where black didn't, didn't know about queen c1 mate. How do you get this far by playing the England and not know to play queen c1? Some decently high-rated players. Um, but yeah, this is a relatively famous trap because all of White's moves were, were like logical, um, and it's sad that Queen C1 is just mate. So, uh, if you ever run into this, I think this line is okay to go into. Bishop F4, Queen, yeah, Queen B4, Bishop D2. I think it's this position where you should not play bishop c3, but you should play knight c3. Um, so essentially, even if you forget, if, you, if you're forgetful, you can just play natural moves and remember knight c3 after queen take b2. And now I think most players will play, actually we can see what most players play, either bishop b4 or knight b4. And both of these moves can be dealt with 
Uh, if bishop to b4, pretty sure bishop to or rook b1 first. Queen a3, and then um, I think knight d5 is a move. You can see knight d5 scores very highly here. And this is actually a, a time where Stockfish can, uh, can give very strong recommendations. So I will enable Stockfish for a little bit. Um, and we can see white has a, a very pleasant advantage. Because um, after the trade on d2, the c7 pawns attacked. The only way to defend it, I think, is king d8. And white is in very good shape. I'm realizing Stockfish is causing the computer to lag, um, or at least the stream to lag, so I'm going to keep it off. Um, but this is essentially the main line. So if you remember this is white, uh, you'll be in very good shape. Um, white's going 70% after e4. And then if we go back, uh, I guess it's useful to look at this move, knight to b4. I'm pretty sure white can respond with knight d4. Just defend c2. Uh, knight b5 is still in the air. Rook b1 is still in the air. And maybe we can keep going here because c5 is interesting. Rook b1, queen a3. Knight db5 can now be played because c2 isn't attacked. And again, white just takes over initiative. A3, nice move. And now black is under serious pressure as probably a move like knight c6 is met with knight d5, just completely crushing. So I don't think I'll go too much further. I just wanted to show, like England Gambit, it's a dubious opening if white is prepared. Um, so I'll leave this here if anyone wants to like add on to this or, uh, or clone it and review it. Uh, I'll share this link in the chat. Speaking of the chat, I've been ignoring everyone, but hopefully that was sort of useful. I know people were asking about endgames, but if you can be more specific, like what types of endgames, um, I don't have too much more time to hang around. Uh, explain when it is good to exchange to open a position and when you should avoid exchanges to keep the position closed? Um, I think that's a good question. Usually what you want to do is open the position when your pieces are better and try and close down the position when your, your pieces are not as good as your opponents or you're behind in development. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of that. Um, but I don't know, nothing immediately comes to mind. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to keep that in mind and then we'll, uh, we'll try and come back to that later. Uh, let's move on here. Would you show some ideas regarding hedgehog system for black? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, let's, let's make a new chapter, hedgehog system. Actually, you know what? I remember that uh, John Bartholomew went over the hedgehog in like a, a very extensive video. And I think it's just a better practice to link that video rather than try and uh, regurgitate what he went over. So let me, um, let me try and find this. John Bartholomew hedgehog. But I'll, I'll leave the chapter here and then I will... I will share it in the study chat. Um, so, hedgehog. Actually, I can start with like c4. It's a system for black. So let's make a comment here. There we go. <laughs> let's call learn the hedgehog with John Bartholomew. Um, and this is amazing. Lee Chess just embeds a video <laughs> in the study. So if you really wanted to, you could watch the video and then look at the study as, uh, or follow along. And, and like, this is amazing. I actually never realized like the, the video is responsive too. So, um, 
So you can basically follow along and save all the analysis from the video or save what, whatever you want. Uh, so hopefully that's effective. Uh, let's move on. Let's take a look at another, uh, another question. Uh, Albin Counter Gambit, perhaps a refutation. Uh, sure. I know very little about the Albin Counter Gambit, but maybe we can figure something out. Albin Counter Gambit. Um, so Albin Counter Gambit, for those who don't know, is d4, d5, c4, e5. And it's a opening that, uh, again, is very tricky. I think it's a bit more sound than the England, which is just bad if white is prepared. Um, in this case, if white's prepared, it should lead to a, a comfortable position. So let's flip the board. We'll, we'll first take a look at the initial trap, which happens after uh, white can take, and then black plays d4. So black is sacking a pawn, and then the trap happens after pawn e3, bishop b4, bishop d2, and then black can play the incredible uh, d take e3, Bishop take b4, e take f2, king e2, and then uh, Andy had thanks for the follow, uh, and then promote to knight with check, and after rook take g1, bishop g4 check. Um, if there's people who haven't seen this before, this is a great uh, a great trap because again, white just plays naturally. Um, e3 is a very natural move to try and trade off the pawn. And then um, bishop take b4 is natural, and it's incredible. Black just wins the queen and um, just gets a completely winning position. Uh, so if we go back, we should take a look how to actually respond for white. Um, let's look at this position with the reference, with opening explorer. But I think... Um, I think the move I would recommend is a3, uh, but I'm curious how like how this performs on like master level. Um, knight of three seems to be the most popular and highest scoring move. Um, Ali Alex, thanks for the follow. So knight f3, knight c6, and then just g3. Um, and usually when I'm studying like a rare variation, I'll I'll turn on the master's database because these are usually the most uh, most high quality games. Uh, Jack Z, thanks for the thousand bits. Appreciate that. Um, but essentially, I'll try and like figure out the highest scoring lines with the master's database, and then sometimes switch back to the Lee Chess database to maybe delve deeper into lines. Um, so we'll just stick with the main line here. Knight g7, bishop g2, knight g6, castle. Uh, this is something I've never studied before. I've seen maybe a few games in it. Uh, but it seems like white is is scoring decently, like winning or drawing the majority, the vast majority of the games. Knight take e5, knight take e5. And now that it branches out a little bit, um, knight a3 is a peculiar move. Um, we can find some games here. I always enjoy Dreyev because he's so well prepared in the opening. Actually, what I'll do, I'll just insert the Dreyev game. Um, so he played b3, bishop c5, maneuver the knight. I like this double fiend Kedo setup. And this, I think, is a type of position you would like against a gambit player. Just something really solid, something perhaps a bit more positional. Where black wouldn't necessarily be in their their comfort zone of like crazy, uh, sacrificial chess. Um, queen h5, aggressive. Wow, knight c5. Was that his idea with queen h5? To play knight c5. And queen h5 is an annoying move because black usually doesn't want to play g6 due to queen h6. So queen d7, okay. Oh, knight d3, nice blockade. Those really interesting queen maneuvers. It went from oh, from d1 to h5 to b5 to b6 to trade on d8. Um, but this just seems like a nice positional game because this, this pawn is blockaded. It's isolated. Just a long-term weakness. 
and then the rest of the game. It was a grind. Seems like white just keeps the advantage. So sometimes what I like to do with openings is like find one nice instructive game which gives some ideas going into the middle game. Um, and hopefully if, uh, if people can do this and maybe find uh, multiple games, like find, uh, find a good handful of games, then it can be, uh, it can be useful. So anyway, um, let's try and move on. Let's do one more. Andy Hav is asking, any advice on the Petrov defense? Trying to pick it up for black or for white? Probably for black. If you're looking to pick up the Petrov defense, Petrov defense, um, there is a few lines to know. Uh, recently, I've been playing a lot of garbage Petrov on Lee Chess. For anyone who's been watching after knight take e5, I've been playing all these tricky lines like knight take e4 or even knight c6. And um, they're, they're great blitz openings against lower rated players, but they're not the most reliable lines to play consistently. Um, so if you're looking to play the Petrov, there's a few things to know. Um, you should play d6 here if you want to play solid. Knight take e4. And the two lines to be prepared for are d4 and knight c3. Um, now you also want to be prepared for d4 in this position as well as knight c3, and, and be prepared for the four knights. Look to play knight c6 here. Actually, maybe uh, there's another move here, bishop to b4, which I think is also interesting if you want to avoid the four knights. Um, unfortunately, I don't know too much about Petrov mainline. Uh, if you want really current games, I would suggest taking a look at Fabiano, uh, especially his games from the candidates, because uh, he was playing the Petrov a lot. and he was going into a lot of like these main lines. Um, I think one of the most popular responses is this uh, this knight c3 line. Uh, not that knight c3, but after knight take e5, d6, uh, knight c3 here is probably the most popular these days. Where black takes, takes, and then and he usually gets into some sharp positions after bishop e7. And... Um, Usually black castles king side, white castles queen side, and it can be a sharp game. Uh, guys, you should be nice to Toilet Noggin, despite his unusual name. Um, also, there's a Kostring Gambit. I forgot about this opening. Knight take e5, d6, and then knight take f7. I think this is playable, even though it's probably dubious if black is well prepared. This is actually surprising. Like this has been played quite a number of times in the Masters database. King dig f7. White scores well. Yeah, I guess anyone who wants to play against the Petrov and wants something crazy, uh, you can look to play the Kostrin. Thank you, Scar Scar cries for the sub. Appreciate that. Um. But yeah, this is this is interesting. D4 is a strong move because black, I don't think you can take on E4 due to queen H5 and then queen D5 is coming to win the knight. I love king E7 though. Should be good somehow. Okay, white to move in this position. I know white is winning somehow, I just forget how. Maybe queen E2. Queen E2 and then F3. Queen h4, there's knight f6. Okay, let's take a look with stockfish. My guess would be queen e2. Queen e2 wins the piece. And white is in good shape. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess if you're playing the Petrov, be prepared for this. Uh, follow probably the main line. Ooh, c5, interesting move. Yeah, I guess know to play c5 and take a look at these games and hopefully you'll be okay. Okay, it's just after 10. Uh, Passpawn99 just joined. Hello, Passpawn. Uh, I'm not taking challenges because I have to go <laughs> like in just a, a minute or two. Uh, this was a really quick stream. Uh, we got through, uh, through four chapters. 
Oh, people can't see the chapters. I zoom out here. Now you can see kind of the the full study kind of. Might have to reconfigure the layout when I'm doing stuff like this. But you have the chapters here. Um, if anyone wants to review this, you can uh, you can you can click the link in the chat. I'll be the easiest. Uh, Ronnie Boy just learned something called the Dutch Leningrad. Do I know anything about it? I know very little about the Dutch. It's just an opening I haven't studied. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll I'll try and learn it at some point. But uh, yeah, I just shared the link to the study. Um, what else can I say? I would recommend for people who want to watch content today, if you want instructive content, you can take a look at the US Open broadcast, which is happening sometime, I think later this evening, probably around seven. I don't think that's going on right now, unless it is. No, it's not. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and raid the chess doctors. Hopefully they're still streaming. They are, okay. So I'll end it here and see you guys in the future.